Sally and David are getting very different that have a great ring to it. I want to welcome you on behalf of Sally's family and tell you how much uh, the life they have with you here is important. There are lots of ways of performing wedding ceremonies and Sally and David have, have opted for a method that has very few moving parts. <laughs> so we will begin in the middle with the homily. Now, at a wedding, a short homily is a kind of miniature sermon. The theme of a wedding homily should be about the meaning of marriage, and then there's a little book and bite thrown in. And generally, the practice of sermonizing begins with a passage of scripture, but not always. So today, I want to draw upon a different tradition for the images we explore. Marriage is like, here I said, bluegrass. <laughs> it is like rock. It is like jazz. It has its pickle moments. Fortissimo, a thundering crescendo. I'm afraid of this. It has the rhythms of the kitchen. Marriage is like music itself. In this, it is more art than science. It takes a while to get there. You start off little. No instruments to play. You got no rhythm. You got no metronome. When you're little, you don't know the score. If you're American, your mom and dad prop you up and prop you up in front of the face as they feed you those little mashed carrots from baby food jars. You learn notes at the same time that you learn the words. You think that notes are words. It's how you sing. And then in time, as you grow, you discover your instruments your musical style, your song. It is a well-known theological fact that one of the greatest tragedies in life is to live your life without learning what music you have been called to play. And then in time as you grow, you discover your instrument, your style, your song. But if you pay attention, discover that playing your own song isn't entirely satisfying all by itself. And so you practice. Lord, how you practice. Because you hit flat when you should be hitting sharp. You build palaces on your fingertips. Your hands learn the music as well as your head. You develop muscle memory. You expand your repertoire. You try other instruments. And so learn about things like linguistics, too, along the way. Phonemes and consonants and suppressed vowels and all of that. You set aside Jimi Hendrix who could make a guitar talk, and you pick up Noam Chomsky. Do you have any idea how hard it is to work Noam Chomsky into a wedding ceremony? <laughs> you become polyphonic. And so far, it's a solo deal. And unless you're Ian Marshall or a Tibetan monk, it's hard to harmonize with yourself. You realize it's no fun working the stage alone, and so you start to look for the partner. You want to duet, and you hope maybe eventually to have a group, if not an orchestra. <laughs> You look for someone, but not just anyone. You look for someone who knows your song. You look for someone whose song harmonizes with your own. You look for someone who can finish your lyrics when words fail you. And so you opt for marriage. Now, 
Now, for some people, marriage is a highly orchestrated affair. Every note has to be played as written. No room for artistic license. No freedom to improvise. There are those who believe that there are some instruments only men can play, like the stand-up bass. But what do they know? Don't you believe it? Not for a minute. And I don't think it's going to be this way at all with David and Sally. I think their marriage is going to be more like a jazz ensemble. It isn't that jazz players play the music. That's, that's not the whole story. I think the music plays the jazz players. And they play off of each other. And it's like that in marriage. You have to listen for your partner out of the corner of your ear. In time, you get to know your partner so well that you anticipate where and when he or she will need to step forward and take the lead. You'll learn to play in a complimentary way. As I've listened to people talk about Sally and David, this is what I hear. They sing each other's songs. They love each other. The love they have plays them the way jazz music plays the music. Now for the advice part. Four parts. Quickly. First, expect that there will be discordant moments as you practice the music of your marriage. There will be times when the rhythms won't work. When you, Sally, want to play bluegrass and David wants to play rock, be patient with each other at such a moment. Sometimes you just have to stop, step back, and take it again from the top. Compose for each other. Learn each other's musical style. Second, learn to appreciate the minor chords. These two have their place in the overall composition. The music will not always be upbeat. Life is not all calliope. It's not all brass band. I remember when I was single and I was looking for that one great love and I knew that when I found her, I would hear trumpet. And when Shailene, my wife, came to me, I heard violin. And I was so intent on trumpets, I almost missed the love that was standing right there in front of me. Thank God for surprising moments. Life doesn't always come to us in the rhythms we would choose. Look for the blessings that come back in shopping. Third, don't forget your musical roots. For you, Sally, that means remembering bluegrass. You stay close to your family. It's true for you, too. Remember where you came from. Finally, remember that even when you don't know it, the song you sing or play as a married couple is part of a larger musical score, what has sometimes been called the music of what happens, or the music of the spheres. And that larger musical score is the composition of a better maestro. Tune yourself. 